All right, hi, Brady. Welcome back to another exciting video. This may be the time to get out of that bad contract that you're in. How are you going to do that? Force majeure clause. Force majeure clause. Without further hesitation, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. Okay, so I had a special request from a good friend of mine, and she said, I want to hear more about this force majeure clause. Okay, so... I'm going to tell you a little bit about contracts here. I'm going to try to keep it short as possible. We'll refer to this as Attorney Steve Contracts College. Okay, so when I was a law student back in Whittier Law School, I basically amjured the contracts law class. Okay, so that means there was about 100, 150 students in there. I got the top grade. How did I do it? I don't know. Must be a master. But you know what I did? I wrote things down. I drew pictures. I wanted to see visually what was going on. I drew people and businesses and the contracts and clauses. And I, I made notes like these. So this was my secret trick. One of the things you have to do in life is to learn how you learn. This was one of the ways I learned. So let's talk about contracts. Very simple. You have an offeror. You have an offeree. The offeror makes the offer. Say you're selling your house for $700,000. The offeror will say, I want to buy your house for $700,000. So that's an offer. It's clear what they want. There's consideration. There's $700,000. And this person can either accept or reject or do a counter offer. A counter offer would kill the offer, okay? And it would be its own new offer. This person would then become the offeree, okay? So um, that's just real basic terms. If you have the consideration, two parties with the mental capacity to contract, a lawful subject matter, you have adequate and certain terms, the, the court can look at this contract and say what it's going to be, you're good to go, okay? And these contacts can, contracts can be written. They can also be oral, okay? You can say, hey, uh, 50, 50 cents, I'll buy the bag of peanuts. Here comes the peanuts. Boom, you just made an oral contract, okay? So some contracts, however, cannot be oral, such as interest in real estate. There's there's certain items that fall under the statute of frauds. I'm not going to talk about that here. But that's basic contract law. But today we are talking about a unique clause, the force majeure clause, that can be inserted into a contract. Normally your contracts are creatures of state law. Okay, so you need a state lawyer where you're located to look at your contract. Normally you're looking at state contracts that are going to be bound and governed by state law. Like one example in Arizona, which is a unique feature, if there's a breach of a written contract, the, the non-breaching party can seek its attorney fees. So that's a unique clause in Arizona. California has others. But in general, they're pretty similar, but there can be differences, okay? So every state, check your own state where the contract. And a lot of times there will be a choice of law contract in there. I have a video on that choice of law. If there's a breach, where are we going to hear it? Is it going to be in your state? Is it going to be in my state? Usually that is something that can be negotiated, okay? But a force majeure clause is something that you may or may not have in a contract. If you don't have it, there's other doctrines, as we call them, common law doctrines that may take the place or serve as a force majeure clause, such as a frustration of purpose and a doctrine of impracticability. The court doesn't want to make people honor their contracts if it's going to be um, uh, just impractical and stupid and, and makes no sense, okay? Grossly disproportionate, I believe was the words, okay? Now, let's talk about force majeure. It essentially means superior forces, where you have superior forces out of the control of the parties at the time they were contracting, things that were unforeseeable, okay? So maybe here they're doing uh, delivery. I'm going to ship you 100, 100, um, I'm going to ship you 100 cars a month to your dealership. Okay, well, nobody anticipated that there was going to be a big hurricane on the freeway and that that freeway was going to be go kaput. Okay, in a circumstance like that, you look at the contract, you say there's a force majeure clause, or you look at one of these doctrines in your state, and you decide, decide can I get out of this contract? And even if you can get out of the contract, there's a duty to mitigate. Maybe there are some things you can do to, to perform a little bit part of the contract, Maybe are there things that you can do? Maybe you can get some third parties to pick up a delivery for you, those kinds of things, taking a different highway. So you always want to look at what is being reasonable. You always want to be commercially reasonable under your contracts to be in the best spot. Because the other thing that could happen is if you have one of these superior forces like war or floods or hurricanes, um, super bad rainy weather that was way out of what, was, what could have been contemplated, 
blackouts, strikes, union strikes, things like that, earthquakes, those kinds of things. And I even have the COVID, the coronavirus on here now. This may be another grounds to check your contracts because now I'm hearing that they're canceling um, out in Arizona right now. I'm hearing they're canceling spring training. A lot of people like to come out here for spring training. The weather's perfect. Now I'm hearing that's being canceled. Different sports teams are canceling. They're talking about canceling the Olympics. I mean, there's all kinds of things that are going on because we have what is being termed a pandemic or a serious threat of a pandemic. And and this was interesting. I found on a Lysol can that they talked about uh, this takes care of the human coronavirus. So I don't think the coronavirus is actually something new. You can check that out on Google. This was on the Lysol can. So I don't know that, how that plays in. But again, 119,000 reported cases, 4,200 claimed deaths, and all kinds of cancellations are coming. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And I, I can tell you this, business owners are looking at their contracts or they're having legal counsel look at their contracts and see, is this maybe the time to get out of this bad contract that I was in for so long? Is this coronavirus going to be something that rises to the level of being able to stop your performance, stop your performance under the contract, give notice to the other party, mitigate your damages, and basically say uh, we need to cancel or suspend our performance due under the contract. So that's really what force majeure is. It's a clause. It just means superior forces, things that were not contemplated at the time of the offer and the counteroffer and the negotiation of the deal. This wasn't something that anybody thought was going to happen, okay? So that is it, unforeseeable events. If you're not sure, the best thing to do is have a lawyer review your contract. We offer a flat rate fee service to look at your contract and advise you as to whether this COVID-19, this coronavirus, which has got the world in its grip right now, is this grounds to get out of your contract or do you need to keep performing? If you don't have the grounds to get out of the contract and you try to suspend your performance, guess what? You're the breaching party. You could be liable for damages, okay? So it's very careful when you come down to these. You want to make these close calls and see if there's a way to, to work through your issue, whatever that issue may be. There's lots of different kinds of instances that can pop up. So that's the force majeure clause. This is Attorney Streep's Contracts College, and that's more most people are ever going to know about force majeure, superior forces, okay? Have a great day. This is general legal information only, not legal advice, advertisement and a communication. If you need help with a business law issue, we're licensed in California. We're licensed in Arizona. And I am Jared Contracts. So give me a ring. Have a great day. Got to run.